Victory Monday, celebrating a road victory up in Blacksburg. The NC State Wolfpack beat Virginia Tech 35-28. to You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's right, $150 back if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. Happy Monday. Happy Victory Monday. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. As we always do on a Victory Monday, or actually any Monday, win or lose, we're going to review Kenton's keys that we discussed on Friday from the Virginia Tech game up in Blacksburg. I have ventured back to the state of North Carolina. Happy to be home, but happy to come home with a gigantic win on the road. Yeah, and and this always makes Monday sweeter. This always just makes it a little better. You know, we, we don't have to assure fans that the sky is not falling, which at times we do. And at times it does seem like the sky is falling. So let, let's not be unfair and say, oh, you all don't know ball if you think things are bad. Because there have been times where things are bad. But let's get into the keys, shall we? Give me my darn theme music. Let's talk about the keys. The first of which was to hit our magic number of 24 points or more. Now, Grayson. I wasn't a math major. I uh, was not. That was not my specialty. I was a chess guy. Um, but I'm pretty sure 35 is more than 24. So it I is. think we hit that key. Okay. Almost hit that key in the first half, might I add. Had 21 going into the half. What yeah. an offensive performance we saw. Absolutely. Ending the half with three straight touchdowns. What a way to do it. Especially a touchdown heading into the locker room. Like literally right before closing out the half in that way. Love to see that. The second was run for 150 plus 188. I tweeted during the game that we're establishing an identity, and I'll be damned if we don't. We have an identity as a physical team that is creative in the running game. We find different ways to get different people involved in the running game. We get our quarterback involved in the running game. We get our receivers involved in the running game. Heck, we'll even get our tight ends involved in the running game. Shout out to Syracuse. You know, we know y'all going to need a coach soon, but keep your hands, keep your grubby little New York hands away from Coach Gibson. You understand me? You understand me, yo? Are we clear? Anywho, uh, yeah, we get creative in the run game. We do what we need to do. So 188 yards, we got that done. The last offensive key was ABKC. Anybody but Kevin Concepcion needed to get the job done with over 100 yards in any regard um, or – Two touchdowns. Again, the passing stats don't count because obviously if Kevin Concepcion has 100, chances are a good amount of them are through the air. Brennan Armstrong, before we did the kneeling thing where we got him banged up a little bit, um, maybe not. Maybe let's not do that next time. The couple of seconds just aren't really worth it in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, <clears throat> Brennan Armstrong had 100 yards and two touchdowns on the ground in this regard. So we finally got a contributor who was relevant when their number was called, that is not named Concepcion. And honestly, I believe uh, if we had targeted him more, we probably would have got Trey Penix in this uh, regard as well. So, you know, that's just my thoughts there. Grayson, take it away. Yeah, I mean, a bit of reiteration from our Saturday live show. Can't say enough praise for Brennan Armstrong these past couple weeks. Just an absolute bulldog. Anytime we needed a first down, Brennan was using his legs to get it done. And had several long runs. A couple of these long runs was just shoelaces away from taking it to the house. Just the absolute gamer and a leader. Just that bulldog mentality has been so refreshing. And and I guess take two of Brennan Armstrong here in the back half of the season. Can't give enough credit to the guy. And certainly hope that his, I think it's his ribs. That's what he was holding uh, late in that game. Hopefully he's able to heal up quickly. Lots of ice, lots of compression. Maybe a little bit of icy hot this week get him right because we got a big one coming on Saturday but the offense in this game was unbelievable to watch 
And especially on the road, because it, it's felt like over the years, sometimes NC State will just kind of crawl into their turtle shell on the road. And back-to-back weeks, c- clearing that magic number of 24, this time comfortably getting up to 35, was amazing. And shout-out to Robert and I, as we mentioned as well, in his bag Saturday evening. That boy's cooking. That boy is cooking. Now, defensively, a group that stays in their bag, they never really get out of their bag. You know, it's, it's – who? what a time to see until second halves, apparently, if our lead is big enough. Then we just, you know, <laughs> throw the bag away and just go to whatever. But the first key was to keep Tudin and Drones under 125 yards rushing. Folks, we held them to nearly one-third of that goal. That duo combined for 48 rushing yards. Oh, what a time. What a time. And I know that Tudin was a little banged up or something along those lines. But, man, what a domination up front. What an absolute domination up front to hold those two to 48. And mind you, a lot of that 48 was Drones making magic happen with his legs. He legitimately did things back there where you're just like, hey, you just kind of got to tip your hat to the other side and say, hey, they got scholarship athletes too. So, you know, that's that's the deal there. The second was two plus drives in our from our 40 forward because obviously we want to set the offense up. In good field position, we did that twice. We did that two times exactly, I believe. So we got that uh, done. And in terms of TFLs, get these guys behind the chains. The goal was five. We had exactly four. So we were five out of six on these keys. We, We accomplished five of them. We just couldn't get it done defensively in terms of keeping them behind the sticks via tackles for loss. But we did make them... Um, have to try and convert many third and longs in, in third and medium or, or further situations. So I will give the defense credit there. So all in all, as the board will tell you, five of six on the keys, folks. Five of six on the keys. We got everything done except the amount of TFLs we were looking for. And again, I think that that's more so a product of how big our league got and how quickly it got there. Yeah. Because at that point in time, I mean, like we literally caught off the dogs, right? Like dogs are, you know, that's another name or euphemism for a blitz. And we quite literally caught off the dogs in the second half to a high degree, a degree higher than I'm comfortable with in any of these names going forward, uh, but to a high degree. The way that we were able to get basically anything we wanted for all of the first half and the beginning of the second half, it would tell you that the final score was NC State letting off the throttle by a, a wide margin there. But these defensive keys, it's funny that you mentioned that most of those 48 yards were from drones. If you think about it, all of them were because Tootin had negative yardage. So drones had 51 rush yards. And then if you subtract Tootin, you had a total of 48. We talked about last week, if you could hold Tootin and drones in check on the ground, you would hold Virginia Tech in check. We absolutely did that. And of course, I'll say this though. I was surprised at how much success that the Hokies found through the air but I do think that is because we called off the dogs to a certain extent. I think we just softened up a little bit and Virginia tech kind of took what they were given. And so that's why probably much of the success came there late in the game. But, you know, in talking about these TFLs as well, the goal was five. Peyton Wilson had three and a half of them by himself. Can't say enough about the guy. We talked about him last week. We've talked about him all season. We got one more home game for Peyton Wilson in the red and white. And I can't wait to see the reception that he gets on senior day uh, coming up the end of this coming week. But all in all, yeah, five out of six keys, that'll win you a ball game virtually every single time. So exactly what we were projecting needed to happen is essentially everything that did happen. And NC State came away with the win. Like I mentioned Saturday evening, it felt like the game was effectively over at 35-14. And if Gibson had told them, hey, boy, we're not letting a single more point get on the board for the Hokies, you probably would have seen several more TFLs to hit that total but all in all a win is a win we're overjoyed with this win on the road and we certainly got a lot to look forward to at the end of this week as well up Have next we're giving our big picture takeaways from this win up in blacksburg after a quick word from our sponsors our first sponsor of the day is listening.com college students listen up this is an incredible app called listening.com and it can take any academic paper pdf or class material and turn it into an audiobook It can read math questions, technical words, and complicated documents, and it knows how to skip all of the citations, footnotes, and references, letting you jump straight to the chapter or section that you need to listen to. 
It even has a one-click note-taking button where it automatically puts the last 10 seconds into a notepad so you don't have to type notes when you listen. I tell you what, I wish I had this when I was in college. This sounds like a great deal. Best of all, if you use the link listening.com slash locked on, you'll be able to get your first three weeks of listening.com for free. So go ahead and give it a try. Usually it's two weeks free, but with listening.com, they're giving you an extra free week when you go to listening.com slash locked on. Listening.com. Be sure to check them out. We're back here on our Monday episode, now giving our big picture takeaways from this win on the road at Virginia Tech. Again, a little bit of reiteration. We sort of got into this Saturday evening on our live show. If you missed us, be sure to check that out as well on our YouTube channel. I'll be tweeting that out probably on Monday morning before I tweet Monday's episode. Some of our big picture takeaways, I believe mine was, I'm just proud of the guys, man. I'm proud of the guys going on the road back-to-back weeks with convincing victories, further pushing on this momentum that we've built after that bye week. The defense is flying around. The offense even is progressing more and more and more as this season rolls on. And so it's kind of a shame in a, in a small sense that we're kind of putting all the pieces together going into our last game of the regular season, but better late than never, as they always say. I'm proud of Coach Dorn and this coaching staff. I'm proud of Brennan Armstrong. I'm proud of the defense. I'm proud of Peyton Wilson, the corners, the running backs. Everyone deserves a boatload of credit for the turnaround that we have conjured up uh, after the midpoint of this season. My my biggest takeaway is something that Lauren Brunlow uh, was talking about on Twitter in that, um, you know, can a, a season be special if you don't raise a banner for, you know, ACC championship, playoff uh, participant, national championship? And, and I'd argue yes. And I'd say that type of stuff is the stuff that gets you to the national championship, that gets you to the playoff, that gets you to the conference championship. Remember, even before the Duke game, people were calling this a rebuilding year. Remember that. People were calling this a rebuilding year. If you can get to 10 wins in a rebuild year, what does that mean when you're actually built up? And I know some people are going to say, well, Ken, People call this a rebuild year to feel good about themselves because the reality is we're very old on defense. Are we? How old are we on defense? Who on defense has no eligibility left? I know Peyton Wilson has no eligibility left. And who else? Uh, let's see. I believe Shaheen Battle will be gone. Okay. I'd imagine – well, Aiden White has eligibility. I'd imagine he'll get picked up by somebody. Right, but that's, but that's my point, though, right? Yeah. You, so you could see Aiden White, Davin Van potentially leaving. But other than them, even them, they're young enough to where they have eligibility if they chose to come back. Yeah. And even beyond them, I mean, everybody else, very, very young defensively, making plays out there, doing their thing. And so, you know, offensively, you talk about you, everybody except Dylan McMahon and Rosner, who's about 40. I mean, hey, congratulations, brother. Go, go, uh, go get that AARP card. But yeah, he, he's he'd be old at BYU. That's how old he is. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, but seriously, you you're looking at a situation where again, this team objectively is very young, other than yeah. Jordan Houston in, in the backfield. Everybody else, we had a true sophomore in Michael Allen and true freshman in in uh Kendrick Raphael. And who else did we have? Delbert Mims. He's a junior, I think. But you you see what I'm saying here? Like yeah. we don't the wide receiver core at large. Wasn't a ton of guys who played a ton of football already. So this really is a year that shows you what can be done, what can be accomplished in Raleigh. Um, you know, this is that type of season that sets that foundation for better and better and better. But even still, appreciate the present. Appreciate this moment of, you know, potentially we're being at the cusp of 10 wins at this point in time in the season. Appreciate that as the present that we live in. Yeah, I talked about it on Saturday. As loud as all the criticism was and the doubt and the naysayers were in the earlier the season, and again, we're guilty a little bit of that. We had a lot of questions about what was going on uh, before we hit that bye week. But, but even even through the questions, we said at the end of that, every game is winnable, every game yeah. is losable. It's not a single game. We didn't say, hey, this team ain't winning another game, and this team, you know, six wins is the ceiling. That we're seeing what we said come to fruition right. because every game was winnable and this team has approached each game the right way and has won every game in front of them so far. 
Right, and we we referenced this tweet from David Hale on Saturday evening, but the Power 5 teams to win eight-plus games in each of the last four seasons, Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame, and drumroll please, NC State. (laughs) That's an elite list to be a part of, and I think a lot of people are losing sight of that because, well, we're not we're not winning trophies. We're not making to the ACC championship. When are we going to win something? We want to win something. That's fine, but you can't not pay attention to what Dorn has done here with this program. He is building a model of success and continuing to do so. The the recruiting, well, how do I phrase this? The to be a part of this list, 8 plus wins in the last 4 seasons. That's rare air. And yeah. We've talked about it multiple times on here. A lot of people say, well, the the ceiling that Dave Dorn will only ever reach is like eight and four, nine and three. Do you know how many schools would kill to have that type of season on a consistent basis? Yeah. Many schools. Yeah. Like, n- not even trying to throw shade here, but Wake Forest would kill to have that. Virginia Tech at this point would kill to have that. That's where they used to be, and they've fallen off a bit. I mean, you could you could look. We're Grayson's just mentioned ACC schools. I grew exactly, up in big. Yeah. I grew up in Big Ten country. Northwestern, you they will literally lifetime. You're yeah. a lifetime there. You're, there's no if ands or buts about it. Indiana, same type of deal. You go out west. UCLA, nine wins a season at UCLA. Child, they, they never getting ready. They are never getting ready. Arizona, Arizona State. You see what I'm saying? Like nine wins at. There's there's a very select few schools where eight to nine wins is not a lifetime guarantee. There's a very select. I would say seven to eight at most schools where that's not a lifetime deal. Everywhere else in the country, other than those seven, eight, hey, you win, win eight, nine games a year, they'll build your statue, rename the stadium after you. Yeah. As, as loud as the criticism was, the appreciation should be equally as loud. A lot of Absolutely. us should be very thankful for the way this season has played out the way this, the last couple seasons have played out. Again, we talked about it a lot in the offseason. Having to go through four quarterbacks and still finishing eight and four last year is yep. incredible. Incredible. Yep. And I think a lot of that gets left in the dust simply because we're not hanging a banner, like you mentioned. Is that a special season? NC State is right on the verge of a special season here. We yep. talked about uh, in the preseason as well. I said, I think this team can win nine games. Here we go. We're going into the last week of the season. We're eight and three. It's right there for the taking. You win that bowl game and you achieve something that's only ever happened one other time in program history. Program history. You celebrate moments like this because, again, this is the building block to the better thing. This is the building block. You look at this situation and you say, you know what? We had quarterback play from an older guy that was absolute dog water for about, what, five or so games? And and we were still able to come out of the, the other side of it with 10 wins? Man, stop playing. Stop playing. You you give that give that accolades, give that praise, because when you get that, that next thing, when you get to that next level, you look back at this one and you say, this set the floor for that one. Regardless on if we get nine wins or 10 wins this season, this season, quarterback change, Brennan Armstrong's resurgence, The coaching job from Dave Dorn and the coaching staff this season will be remembered for a long time. I know I will remember this season for a long time, whether they lose the next two or win the next two. I will talk about 2023 for a very long time. That is how good of a season we've actually turned out to have here. Again, as loud as all the naysayers were, the credit needs to be up front now too. We've come to collect. The credit needs to be just as loud. Up next, we're going to do a short recap of weekend basketball as we've been so football focused after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get up to $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right, $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. And there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So if they have the option, you might want to place a wager on Frank Wright getting canned before this end of the before the end of the Carolina Panthers season. You also might want to put the house on NC State to knock off UNC the end of this week. But regardless, get over to FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and celebrate your winnings this NFL season. 
FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, little weekend basketball recap to close out our Monday episode. We'll go in chronological order. So the men's team played on Friday night. They beat Charleston Southern by a score of 87 to 53. I'll start with my kind of takeaways here. I thought DJ Horn played a tremendous game, and I tweeted out, it feels to me that DJ Horn has been even better than advertised. I was expecting him to come to NC State and be a little bit of like a microwave scorer. Didn't expect so much of him doing the ball handling duties off and on maybe with Michael O'Connell, but I've been surprised the level of defense from DJ Horn. I think he rebounds at a high clip despite maybe his height disadvantages getting into the paint. You know, just Friday night, he had 18 points and six boards, which is one of the higher numbers on the team. Um, Keeping on the topic of a DJ, DJ Burns remains DJ Burns. He poured in 16 points of his own. That disgusting spin off the dribble to then lead to a dunk. I didn't even know if you could get a credit card under DJ Burns' feet last year. Now he's throwing down dunks after trimming a little bit this offseason. He looks tremendous. He looks like he's slated for a special season, maybe even outdoing himself from last year. And then my last takeaway here is Dennis Parker Jr. I saw a lot of tweets about Dennis Parker Jr. on Friday night, had to throw in my own. The ceiling on DPJ is so tall. Like this is an industrial size ceiling. The way that this kid's playing is just a freshman. He plays well beyond his years, bulldog mentality, fearless. He can defend. He can score. He's versatile in any kind of lineup you throw him into. I love Dennis Parker Jr. And I'm so excited to see what he looks against these power five teams coming up here uh, near the end of this week. You know, my takeaway is this is a team that is doing what they're supposed to do. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what does that mean? You know, you're giving a a fish credit for swimming. Look around the conference, my brothers, sisters, friends in Christ. Everybody is not in fact swimming like a fish should. So uh, I'm going to give this team credit for, having a wire to wire domination more or less after halftime this game didn't get exponentially closer and you start having to bite your nails and wonder oh man are we gonna let them back into it and what's going on here no this was a game that again from start to finish the wolf pack absolutely dominated and so you know I'm, I'm gonna give credit and give love for that one. yeah despite maybe some of the early shooting struggles i never had like an inkling of doubt in this team i knew As soon as we got clicking defensively, the shots would then follow around with that, and Charleston Southern was simply not going to be able to run with us, and that's exactly how it played out. Quickly pulled away there before half, and then after half, I mean, it was we were long gone at that point. So I think that's a great point you make. They're taking care of business. They're doing exactly what they've needed to do these first couple games, and that's important too because now we start looking at P5 teams. We've got Vanderbilt coming up, some Turkey Day hoops on Thanksgiving. Going to have to see who we play after that but more p5 teams on the horizon in the non-conference schedule and so i'm i'm giddy almost to see what we look like against stiffer competition because we've been able to handle our own against the lower schools like we're supposed to now switching over to the women's side they took out rhode island on sunday by a score of 67 to 58 kind of the same storyline they struggled a little bit in the first half of this game actually trailed at halftime to rhode island before they rewrited the ship and took off from there Sanaya Rivers, another great game, 19 points. Isaiah James, 17. Mimi Collins is certainly having a solid year so far, 10 of her own. Freshman Zoe Brooks, can't say enough about her, another 10 points for the freshman. So I think this game is important too because, sure, you beat the brakes off of Elon uh, earlier in this week, but it's just these non-conference games after you're still kind of sitting on a high of beating UConn. You can't afford to get surprised by a team like Rhode Island who put up a good fight in this game. So it's a little bit of like a character building win, even though you still handle business when it was all said and done. This is a game that this team would have lost last year. This is a game that this team loses last year. We saw it multiple times last year when we finally thought, man, we turned the corner. We beat Notre Dame. Oh well, yeah, we turned the corner. We got a good, great win. We got, we looked really good. We just beat Iowa. We turned the corner. And then we're playing a team that's a, a, an inferior opponent who sneaks up on us and walks out with a W. Right. This was a game that last year we're scratching our heads and we don't know who's the leader. We don't know who's what. I'll tell you what, this team is establishing not only an identity early, but they're getting into their roles early. They're getting into their roles well early. 
We're getting in the scene. Mimi Collins is your paint presence early. Sanaya Rivers is your do everything person. That she's your leader in that role early. Zoe Brooks is your ball handler off the bench to ignite offense amongst the twos early. Isaiah James is your instant offense early. Long story short, we're seeing defined roles and also we're seeing the Westmore team do what Westmore teams doing. What is that? Getting a stance. You're not going to play on the Westmore Coast team. If you don't know how to get down, get low and, and, and be where you're supposed to be. And this team, you know, was this game perfect? No. Was this game even pretty? At times, no. There were times where we were facing a 10-point deficit against Rhode Island, for Christ's sake. But the reality is when this team turned it on and they start playing the brand of defense that they know how to play and they start knocking down a couple of shots, all of a sudden, oh, look at that. We're in the lead. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We're controlling the game now. So, you know, all in all, would we like to see a uh, better performance from the jump? Absolutely. But with that being said, we did what we need to do and came away with the win. And last thing before we get out of here on Monday, women's cross country won their third consecutive national championship back to back to back champions. That is unbelievable. Shout out to the entire team. Shout out to Caitlin Tui. Shout out to Coach Lori, who's maybe putting her name in the conversation for greatest NC State coach ever with three in a row. That's an incredible accomplishment. Shout out to women's cross country national champions yet again. An amazing accomplishment. I mean, hey, you love a three-peat. You talk about hanging banners and all that. You talk about winning natties and all that. What more could you ask for? Because Lori is is undisputedly one of the best to ever do it. This team continues to show out. They continue to dominate. I mean, what more can you ask for? First national championship of the year, by the way, goes to the I saw that as well. The first school to win a national championship in the 2023-2024 calendar year. So, hey, NC State's on the board first. What more could you want? Absolutely. We up one. Now let's find another one somewhere in here. Let's find another two somewhere in here. Let's find another three. Let's see how crazy we can get with this thing. That'll do it for us here on Monday, as always. Thank you all so much for the support over the weekend and, of course, throughout another great week of Wolfpack Athletics. Be sure to get those comments in the comment box. Mash that like button. Mash that subscribe button. I believe we're like eight or nine away from hitting that 900 mark. We still got our eyes on the 1,000 mark, and we could not do it without the support of Wolfpack Nation. So make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit that subscribe button, and you'll keep getting this daily content from Kenton and I. Again, that'll do it for us here on Monday. Until tomorrow, go Pack. Go Pack.